it's Sarah and today we are going to talk about what I read in the month of September because it was fantastic. So I'm going to go in order that I read them. This is not necessarily like all my class books all together. There's going to be some adult mixed in with some of this YA but anything YA I did read for my class and then I had to throw in a couple other ones there too. I had a lot on my plate in the month of September. I had a big reading project that I had to get started on for my young adult literature class. I have to read 10 books a month basically for the next three months and I did it. I read all the books I need to shoot for that one. I did have one under my belt already when the month started because I had read one at the very, very end of August that I used for my class. Um, so that one's not gonna be in here but it was technically in my TBR, even though I already read it, just to show you that, yes, there's 10 that are going on there. But for the actual month of, of September, um, I started out with Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo and absolutely loved this book. I loved it. This one follows Diana, who is young. She's a teenager still, and she is living on her island. She comes across a stranded boat that kind of washes up onto shore. There is a girl in this boat who is still alive. So Diana jumps into the water, saves her. However, uh, this girl has a big impact on the magic of Diana's island and the island actually starts to crumble. And it's almost like the island is dying because of the stranger. So Diana has to decide, am I going to get this girl off the island and save everybody? And, you know, like, take care of her, kill her basically to save the island. Or she finds out about a prophecy where if this girl is taken to a sacrificial site, that it will save everybody. It's a whole thing. And Diana has to make that really hard decision. So uh, Diana, you know, decides to help the girl because that's what she does. And um, I really enjoyed it. I really liked the characters. I really liked the characters. And you see Diana go to New York City, which is very interesting because this is all present day. Um, even Diana's Island is present day. She knows about the modern cultures and stuff and knows enough about it. Um, even though she doesn't live that way, she does study it. So that was pretty interesting. And yeah, I really liked it. This is my first Lee Bardugo book. <laughs> so I definitely want to read more from her because I really did like the writing in here and I thought it was great. So I will definitely continue on in the um, DC Icons series, but I gave it four stars. It wasn't a complete five star read, but it was really good. I really liked it. All right, unpopular opinion time. I read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and I did not like this book. <laughs> I really didn't. I was trying to think of things that I liked about it, but I didn't like it at all. I just, I don't know. I didn't care. I didn't care about Calf. I didn't care about her relationships. I didn't care about things she was dealing with. I just, I was bored <laughs> to be honest with you guys. And I wanted to read it because it's been on my shelf for a very long time. It's an extremely popular young adult book. Rainbow is an extremely popular young adult author. So, you know, reading her most popular work is pretty important, I think, to anyone who's going to be working with teenagers, if you're working as a librarian or whatever. I feel like, you know, you should at least have this knowledge and know what it's about to be able to speak about it. So I do have that knowledge now. So that's why it was important to me to read it, even though I didn't like it. Um... Yeah, I just, I didn't care. <laughs> I really didn't. Like, nothing about this appealed to me. I didn't like the fan fiction that was in here either. And I got really confused a lot because you're reading the story of the book, like Kath and Levi and all the characters and stuff, which was like, okay, fine. Um, and then you get Simon Snow, which is like a Harry Potter basically book series in here that's very popular. It's like a Harry Potter type thing. And then you get Cass fan fiction that she writes about Simon Snow. You get all three of those. You get snippets of Simon Snow, the actual books, and then you get Cass fan fiction. So there were times where I had to listen to it. I was listening to this on audiobook and I had to figure out like, is this Simon Snow or is this Cass Simon Snow? And you didn't find out until like, 
the narrator would, would tell you what excerpt it was from. And even if I was reading it, I'd have to go find the excerpt to first to see which one we were in. I didn't like that. I thought it was distracting. Um, I wasn't following it because like I didn't really get the whole Simon Snow thing because it's not something that I know enough about to care about hearing passages or reading passages from it. So I didn't care. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't care about this book. I didn't care about the, the entire thing. I didn't like it. Um, Kath drove me nuts too. I didn't like the way she reacted to her mother. Um, she was so up and down. It was almost like, will you make up your mind about how you feel? <laughs> because this is really confusing. Uh, it was like, ugh, I don't know. I didn't like it. So no, I gave it two stars. Not for me. I can see why young adults like it. If I had maybe read this around young adult time, I may have felt differently. So I will put that out there. As a 40 year old woman, I didn't care. And I'm not gonna read Carry On now. So there's that. So the next one made up for that because I read Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. And this is one of my favorite books of the year. Oh my gosh, this book. Okay, this is a young adult. I would consider it like a horror horror supernatural type of book. And this follows a community that lives on this place called Salt Hill Rock. It's like an island. And it's off the coast of Boston, I believe. And this girl, Marion, her and her mother move to Salt Hill Rock along with uh, Marion's older sister. They move there because their mom got this job opportunity to work as a housekeeper for a very rich family who lives on this island. And so they go over there. Immediately, Marion is like, something is not right here. And something is not right there because there have been quite a few girls who have gone missing on Salt Hill Rock over the years there, you know, it's not like all at once or anything. It's kind of spanning some time and something is very fishy about that because the bodies are never found. They don't know what happens. The girls just disappear and they're never heard from again and nobody knows what's going on. They're just kind of presumed to be dead. So Marion uh, starts to really have some suspicions about the girl who's living in the house where her mother is working. Her name is Val. And she also, uh, makes friends with this girl named Zoe, whose dad is the, I guess, sheriff of the town, if you will. And so she finds herself kind of in the middle of everything because Marion's older sister goes missing. And uh, she has some suspicions about some certain people and she's trying to figure out what's going on. She's working with Zoe to try to figure some things out because Zoe doesn't trust anything either. And, um, it was interesting because this book very much told you what was going on on both sides of everything, but it also kept you guessing, <laughs> you know, like we're seeing Marion try to figure things out. We kind of know what's happening on the other side of what she's trying to figure out, but we don't know where it's going to be leading to. So it was very good at doing that. I thought it was great. And um, this has really great representation as well. There is a, a lesbian couple as well as an asexual character in here. And a lot of people call it feminist. I guess maybe. I mean, the, the three main characters are women and they're strong. Um, one of them was a little too strong for me. It felt like she was trying too hard to be a feminist. It got kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, I guess I could, I would understand how it's classified as like a feminist read probably. Um but it was very good and very, very gross, creepy, bleh, like, um, definitely some gross and gory content. There's also a lot of swearing in here. So for like young adults, it would be like older young adults. There is a lot of um, sexual talk as well. So older young adults, I would say like, you know, 16 and up probably for this one. But oh man, it was so good. I absolutely loved it. I love this author. She has officially become one of my favorites. And this was fantastic. And the next one that I picked up is By Your Side by Casey West. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for a while because it is set in a library. And it follows a girl who gets accidentally locked in a library overnight. And whoops. <laughs> um, she pretty much is stranded there and doesn't have a way to communicate to tell people to come and get her. So she kind of just sits back and waits for her friends to realize she's not with them and then they can come back and get her, but that doesn't happen. And then she finds out that she's actually not alone in the library. There's someone else with her and it's a boy from school that she knows. And 
he's not there by accident. So, okay, this is my first Casey West book. I don't know if I'll pick any more up from her or not, to be honest with you, because this one of all the ones that she's written, this is one I was most interested in because of the setting. Set in a library, locked in overnight. Yes, please. Like, that's my dream, right? Um, mm, but I kind of went into this with the assumption that the entire thing would be set in the library. That's, that's what I was expecting. And they were out of the library before halfway through this very short book. So they weren't really in there all that long. So that kind of disappointed me a little bit. I was like, man, I thought they were going to like be in the library this whole time and you know, all that. And that's not quite what I got. But as the story went on, it made sense. Like, okay, so I started not getting so mad at it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, so I ended up enjoying it. I gave it a three stars just because it threw me off a little bit with, you know, them being out of it so quickly. I was like, but this was marketed as like, you know, they get locked in a library and oh, awesome. And I thought it was going to be the whole thing, but it wasn't. Um, but I did really enjoy the characters and I liked their development as well. And I think that our main character, Autumn, really like this experience really showed her what's important to her in her life and kind of helped her from making some probably not good decisions. So I did enjoy it. It wasn't the best thing I ever read. It was quick and easy. I read it really quickly. Um, so Casey West, I'm on the fence about if I'm not, I'll, you know, read anything else by her. If you guys have your favorite, like a favorite Casey West that you think everyone would really love, let me know. Maybe I'll pick something up from the library, but we'll see. So three stars for this one. And the next one that I picked up was a five star prediction. So this is an adult book. It wasn't for my class, um, but I picked up Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I won't give you my official star rating. I'll save that for my five star prediction follow up. Um, but I did not give it five stars. I'll say that. Um, this one follows a woman who has a daughter and she has a secret as well that you don't really know what's going on at first, but you kind of get the sense that she is on the run and, uh, doesn't, you know, she's like living in fear basically for her and her daughter's lives. And then, you know, as the story unfolds, you find out why, but, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, moving on. And then the next one I picked up is Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. I do have a reading vlog for this one if you guys are interested in that, but this one I did read for my class as well and really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed this more the second time that I read it because I did read this a while ago and I listened to it on audio and I don't recommend that because I did not retain most of what happened in here because of, of listening to it. So when I actually sat down and physically read it, it was like reading it for the first time. So that was fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars only because it wasn't quite as action packed as the previous two books, but it made sense. This is very much a um, journey for self-discovery that Selena needs to go on. She's finding out exactly what she's capable of and what her magic entails because it's been suppressed for so long. Now she has traveled to a place where she can actually use her magic and she's finding out exactly how powerful she is and it's a little bit scary. And she teams up with a fairy named Ronin who, Rowan, I always say Ronin, it's Rowan, R-O-W-E-N. I did that the entire time that I was reading it too. I kept saying Ronin. I don't know where that's coming from. Rowan. And um, they are working together to train Selena to, you know, be able to use her magic correctly and know her actual strength. So she doesn't, nothing gets out of control and she doesn't, you know, kill herself or other people around her. And it was very interesting. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good continuation. Again, not quite as action packed, but it made sense still. It was very important for her to do this. So um, yeah, it was good. The next one that I picked up is another young adult, and that is Of Poseidon by Anna Banks. And this is a local to me author. She actually grew up in the city that I am from and um, still lives here too. So that's pretty cool. And this is book number one in a trilogy that is a mermaid trilogy. And we follow um, Emma, who is our main character, and she goes on vacation in Florida. And she's with her best friend. 
they go into the ocean to go surfing and her best friend is actually attacked and killed by a shark and Emma is left to deal with that. At the beach, she actually ran into uh, this really gorgeous guy and just, you know, kind of, it was embarrassing for her. She was all fumbled and stuff. She couldn't even talk around him. And she goes back home to New Jersey after the vacation's over or after her best friend dies. And she goes back home to New Jersey to kind of deal with all this stuff. She goes to school and he's there. And that's weird to her. She's like, wait a second. <laughs> Why did I meet you in Florida? And all of a sudden you're here and you're following me. What's going on? Um, so she is dealing with all this stuff. And she's also kind of trying to figure out why she has always had the ability to communicate with sea animals and sea life and fish and stuff. She can hold her breath for a very, very long time underwater. She doesn't know why she can do that either. And he helps her figure out all these things. And it was very angsty and it was interesting. I actually really liked this. So I, I read like, I got maybe halfway through and I was like, okay, yeah, this is fine shape it up to maybe be a three star, maybe like it was fine. Um, it was funny. There was a lot of really good humor in here. Anna's pretty funny. Um, but then the ending got me and I was like, Hmm, yeah, I want to continue on. Cause I was reading it. Not sure if I was going to continue on with the trilogy or not, but the ending, I was like, Nope, I'm in, I'm interested. Um, so I will definitely read the other two. I do have them on my shelves already, but yeah, this was good and I ended up giving it four stars. The next one that I read was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert and this is a young adult fantasy book um, and it follows a girl named Alice and Alice's grandmother wrote a very creepy book series and or like I don't know if it's a book series it's like short stories almost within one book I think so maybe it was like a short story like compilation type of thing, but they're all like really, really creepy, creepy characters, creepy happenings. And it becomes a rare book because it was very limited as far as publishing goes. And there's not that many copies out there. It's really hard to get a hold of that type of thing. Um, Alice is starting to notice that there are some things happening around her that happened in her grandmother's books. And she's starting to question whether or not those books were fiction or whether or not those stories were actually fantasy that her grandmother made up or if there's actually things that exist but nobody knows about. So Alice takes it upon herself to go to the Hazelwood which is her grandmother's estate to try to figure out exactly what is happening and what's going on around her. Uh, this one it's still hard for me to pinpoint my feelings on this one. I thought it was good. I thought it was well written. Um, it was definitely creepy. The characters from the books were super creepy, definitely. Um, and you definitely get that feeling of what's real and what's not. I'm not quite sure. Um, there were a couple things that came around full circle, which was nice. It was just a little bit hard for me to follow. It was hard for me to picture everything happening as it was happening in the book. It felt very chunky, like... I don't know, while it, while the writing was well done, like the flow of it, I think was a little bit weird. And it was hard for me to kind of, you know, keep my interest consistently throughout the story. So it kind of felt almost blocky. I don't know, it's so hard for me to like figure out exactly my feelings. Like I said, I gave it like three, three and a half stars, probably. Um, I did not like it, but I didn't love it either, I guess. So I there's that. And will I continue and read the other, like, number two is coming out soon? I don't know. I don't think I would buy it, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. So, liked it, didn't love it. The next one that I grabbed is A Sky in the Deep. This is by Adrian Young. Now, this one. The issue I have with this one is that this is marketed as a fantasy book. However... <laughs> There were not any fantastical things that happened in this book at all. These, this follows a Viking clan, two Viking clans that are at war with each other. And that's it. They're Vikings. That's historical <laughs> versus fantasy. So I don't know about the whole fantasy thing. So that kind of like right off the bat gave me some issues with like, why is this considered a fantasy? There's nothing fantastical in here. There's no mythical creatures. There's no 
like just nothing fan fantasy happened in here. So I don't know. It was a little strange. Unless people consider Vikings fantasy. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Anyway, this follows two Viking clans that are at war with each other. They have been at war for a very long time. It's just something that's always been that way. And the children in these clans are raised to hate the other clan. And I mean, we start off like they're at there's a war. We open the book in the middle of the battle <laughs> and we follow um, our main character, Elin, who is a teenager in one of the clans. And she ends up becoming a prisoner of the rival clan. They capture her. They take her back to their village and she ends up being a slave for one of the families there. And she's living in the house and like having to serve them and do all those things. And she is very slowly realizing that maybe they're not quite so different as she was raised to believe. And um, maybe she might have some feelings that she doesn't like. So very interesting. And then when a common enemy comes along and is attacking both the clans, the clans have to decide if they are going to band together and fight this enemy together side by side instead of against one another. But can they do that? I mean, this is so ingrained in them that they hate each other, that they have consistent wars with each other and kill each other as much as possible. So can they put that aside? We'll see. I really liked this a lot. Um, I thought the writing was great. The main character, Elin, kind of at first bothered me a little bit. She was very stubborn. I mean, like, oh my gosh, would you just shut up and listen? <laughs> like, but she came around. She grew on me. And by the end, I was completely on her side. Um, but yeah, it was really good. There's a lot of tension in here as well, like some sexual tension happening in here and definitely almost like a forbidden romance, like a Romeo and Juliet type thing, which I thought was kind of interesting. Just give me like a little bit of those vibes. Um, but yeah, I really liked it and I gave it four stars and I will definitely read more from this author. I know there is a companion novel for this one that is already out that I have on my Kindle already called um, The Girl the Sea Gave Back. And I believe it's like, same basic thing. I think it's set years apart, but um, yeah, so I'm excited to read that one too. And yeah, I definitely recommend it. I give it four stars. Another unpopular opinion time. Hmm. The Sun is also a star by Nicola Yoon. Okay. This one did not really surprise me that I didn't love it. I wasn't expecting to love this book and I did not. <laughs> um, Okay, so this book takes place over 24 hours. It follows our main characters, Daniel and Natasha. Uh, Natasha's family is from Jamaica, but they have uh, outstayed their visa to live here and they are being deported. Um, it's something that Natasha has been kind of expecting to happen and now it finally is, but she's still fighting. She's still, you know, going to the immigration offices and hiring lawyers and trying to figure out how they can stay here still. Daniel is a Korean American and he is dealing with very overbearing parents who expect perfection from him. He's not perfect. Uh, they expect him to do all these certain things that he doesn't want to do. He's also dealing with a very big bully of a big brother. Um, they have a chance meeting in a record store and kind of hit it off and they end up spending the entire day together and they basically help each other with their own issues that they're having. Um, and they're falling in love at the same time. Okay. <laughs> oh, another case where I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't fully buy their love story either. I didn't feel the connection that they were supposed to be having. Um, I didn't love Natasha. I thought she was kind of rude <laughs> and just like standoffish. Um, I felt like Daniel was trying too hard and yeah, I don't know. Just, I didn't connect with it at all. I really just didn't. And, um, yeah, the writing was also very repetitive. There was one line in here that she said over and over and it drove me nuts. I think it was observable fact. And then I was reading that and then I thought in my head, this line is getting really annoying. And then it was like three times in a row she said that and I went, okay, mm, really annoying. 
<laughs> so that bothered me a little bit. It kind of grated on my nerves, but I don't know. Yeah, I just, I didn't care. I really, truly didn't. And I don't think Nicola Yoon's going to be an author for me moving on in the future. I don't think I'm going to read any more of her books. So yeah, I don't know. It's a bummer. This cover is gorgeous though. It's like one of my favorite covers ever. Um, but just, yeah, the story inside, I just, I didn't care. I gave it two stars. And then I picked up a book that could very possibly be my favorite book of the year. We'll see how the rest of the year goes, but Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Oh my gosh, this book. Okay. This follows a town called Bear Town, and it is a hockey town in Sweden. It is a very, very small town, and the claim to fame is that it has a very good hockey team that can win championships and do all these things. Um, Coaches are legendary, all that kind of stuff. And you follow how important this hockey team is to this town. This hockey team can get them sponsorships. It can get the town um, more stores, which means more jobs, which means more people moving there, um, helping the economy, things like that, because hockey is such a big deal there and you know it's going to drive people to the town. So there's a lot of pressure on this hockey team to do well. And, um, the hockey players are basically treated like gods and I'm not kidding. <laughs> they are treated like gods, especially the captain of the hockey team. He is treated like royalty in this town. Okay. Enter, um, the general manager of the hockey team and the hockey club that's there. Uh, he has a daughter, a teenage daughter, and, um, she finds herself in a very scary situation where the captain of the hockey team has raped her. And uh, what's going to happen because of that? Um, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> so... Number one, the writing in here is brilliant, the way that he sets everything up. It takes a while to set everything up. So the action didn't really start until a little bit into the book, which I didn't mind because he really makes sure that you know how important this hockey team is and how important it is that these kids are successful and that they have all these opportunities and whatever. Okay. Um, so you get it. You get why all this is happening. And then this happens. And then you find out how everybody reacts. You find out how the girl, Maya, reacts. You find out how Kevin, the rapist, acts. You find out how the coaches, the other players, the parents of the other players, I can't, <laughs> um, business owners in the town, like how everybody is reacting to what is happening and how they are treating everybody in the situation, how they're treating Maya how they're treating Kevin, how they're treating Kevin's parents. Like, oh man, there's so much and it is so well done. I, oh, I can't. So well done. Um, it was frustrating. It was infuriating at times. I was cheering at times. Ramona, Ramona, if you've read this, Ramona, like, oh, my queen. I, I literally cheered out loud. <laughs> <laughs> in certain points with Ramona. Um, the coaches, the president of the hockey club, not the general manager whose daughter got raped, the president. Ugh. Just so many things. If you're going to read this book, find a friend to read it with. Like really, truly, I read this with Amanda from The Curly Reader and we had so much to talk about every day. We read this over four days and we had so much every day to talk about because there's so much in here. There's so much commentary about how people are treated in these situations and it mirrors things that happen still today. And it's so frustrating. And, you know, you just think about, I personally thought about all the NFL players who have gotten away with things like this and how many women have been abused or swept under the rug to protect these people's careers. You know what I mean? And it's happened. It's happened. I think we are getting to a point now where we're not standing by anymore and letting it happen anymore. Um, but how many women have been paid off? to boost someone else's career or to make something go away. Like I just, I can't even fathom it. And it makes me sick. Um, 
just, oh, it's so good, you guys. Like, I can't even praise this book enough. This is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. And it's one that's sticking with me. I'm going to think about this all the time, probably. And I can't wait to read the follow up. And I definitely plan to do that soon. I'm probably gonna wait till after my class is done. So I can really, you know, dive into it. But this book is so fantastic. I definitely recommend reading it with somebody because you are going to need to talk about it. You definitely are. And I can't recommend it enough, like really, truly. I'm also in the middle of two books. Um, so these two books were for contemporary fun, actually. So this one I read, um, for a diverse read. And then this one was a hard hitting read. This also had trees on the cover. Uh, so those fulfilled some prompts for that. And then I had two more books that were on that TBR. I have The Last Mrs. Parish, which was for yellow on the cover, which was a little bit of a cheat, but that's fine. I did get quite a bit into this. I still have this much left to read though. So I'm not quite there. I'm not going to be able to finish it like right the second. It'll probably be tomorrow that I'm able to finish this book. I still have a little bit more to go. Um, but getting back into this, I love it. Like, I cannot believe I put this down and didn't pick it back up again. Luckily, I didn't have to reread anything. I remembered, I read like the last few pages before I stopped and then I was, it triggered everything. I remembered everything that I had read. And, um, yeah, just continuing. I'm like, why did I put this down? I love this book. It's really good. So really enjoying this one. I will finish this like tomorrow, probably. Um, and then I also did start 13 by Steve Cavanaugh. This is the book that you guys voted for me to read in the month of September. I have started it again. I have this much left to read. <laughs> so I'm there, but I'm not quite there yet. It's going to take me another day or two uh, to finish this one up. But I am currently reading it. It'll just have to be in my October wrap up versus my September. But I did at least get more than half of it read in the month. So just to update you on that. But I am really, really enjoying this one too. Okay, that's it. Oh, I feel like I've been talking forever because I have because I read a lot in the month of September. And I had some naysayers out there. I did. I had some people thinking I wasn't going to be able to do this, but I did. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for me today. I will be back tomorrow with my October TBR. Some more YA coming up your way. I have quite a few plans for October, but after doing this, I'm pretty confident that I can do it. So, all right, I will see you guys then, and I will talk to you again soon.